Hi everyone, I'm Allie Gardner. I'm the ACF Kids Director. And I just wanted to come before you today uh, with some tips to help right now. I know that senseless violence is hard for everyone to understand, but it's especially challenging for our children to process. And as parents, we never want our kids to have to face the horrors of the events that have transpired in Buffalo or in Texas this last week. However, this is the world that we're living in and this is where they're growing up. And it's, it's important to recognize um, when we're feeling fearful and emotional, they are too. And they may not have the development um, to be able to process it in a healthy way. So we can bemoan the fact that they're being raised in this time, but remember God's in control and he knew exactly what time he was placing your child into this world. In Esther, we see uh, the question, maybe you were made for such a time as this. Who knows? So in this time, our families, we may face uncertainty, we may face failure, fear, suffering, as we try to fulfill God's plan for our lives, but God is with us every step of the way. He's working all things for the good of those who love him, Romans 8, 28. But here are a few things I want to give you that are practical to help support you. First, reassure your children they're safe. Tell them they're safe and talk about how the policemen, the firemen, the military, and people around them are looking out for them every day. One of the best ways to make them feel safe is to stick to your normal routine, the need to be able to depend on the things you can control and to rely on the normal to navigate the unknown is really important right now. Allow them to continue to do things they enjoy and to be kids. They need playtime and they should be able to laugh and have fun even if there's pain around them. Play therapy is actually a healthy outlet for kids and laughter is one of the best ways for kids to release emotion and endorphins. Second, take time to listen and talk. Validate their feelings and let them know it's okay to feel the way that they do. Talk about ways that they can express themselves, a feelings wheel, uh, crying, drawing it out, and talking to someone and to God. Third, keep your explanations developmentally appropriate. Pay attention to the little ears that might be listening. Oftentimes, we want to explain what's happening, but we don't have the right words. So with your early elementary children, just help them give by giving them simple, brief information that's balanced with reassurance about how their school and homes are safe and how the adults are there to protect them. Give some simple examples, like reminding them to keep the exterior doors locked or monitoring other people on the playground, recognizing who is a stranger and who is not. In your upper elementary and middle school, kids are gonna ask questions and they want you to answer them as honestly as you can. You may not have all the answers, but it is okay to answer them directly, but be aware of the word choices you use. They may need assistance though, separating reality from fantasy. So talking about what they've heard versus what their the truth is. And they might have some stories that they've made up in their brains that is actually caused by the fear that the situation has rendered. In the upper or middle school and high school, students are gonna have strong varying opinions about the cause of violence in our schools. And they, will share concrete suggestions about how to make their school safer and how to prevent tragedies in society. So listen to them. Talk about ways for them to advocate for each other. But the most important component to supporting your children through any act of violence or tragedy is actually replacing the time that they are spending watching the reels or the news with prayer. Prayer is vital as the spirit can bring peace when you're fearful. It can bring you joy when there's pain and it can bring hope when all else seems lost or out of control. And teaching our kids how to manage their emotions and ensure they feel safe and loved and cared for is important. So pray with your kids aloud. Ask God for protection and for his peace. Show them that no matter what, God's always with them. And when they're scared, they're feeling unsure, or they feel alone, that they can talk to him. He loves them even more than we do. Teach them that sometimes when we feel powerless to help, that we have a mighty God who hears us when we pray, and he's the one who will change hearts and lives. So we just need to be more mindful of praying and talking to him. So pray with me today. God, we ask that you bless all of the families that have been struck with this tragedy, God, and just cover them in your peace and cover them with your comfort today. Jesus, we ask that all those who are fearful right now that are stressing and feeling that anxiety and that pressure of keeping kids safe is they, they feel you today, that they know that they can trust you and that God, their hearts turn towards you and not towards the world. 
God, we ask that you be with the teachers that are struggling with this. When we have gone through these trainings on methodology and classroom management, none of that seems to matter when we are going through active shooter training, God. Help us to be able to know how to love our kids well and to protect them. And to remember that Jesus, you are in the center of those classrooms. Even when we feel like we have no support or that we are struggling or that we're fearful that God, you are there. God be with those moms and dads who are struggling with missing their children today. Help them to feel you moving in them and help them God in the coming years to know that you are using their story for good. God, we ask that you just continue to be with us and help us walk through this time as you built us for the time we are currently in. Help us to know how to help, how to move forward, and how to trust you with it all. In your holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you all, and I love you.